This is Dean Rothbard, director of the Low Volume Manufacturers Association, reporting from Orlando, Florida, where I have been attending the 2008 Rapid Development and Manufacturing Solutions Conference put on by the Society of Manufacturing Engineers. The conference is the largest annual event in the rapid prototyping additive fabrication industry and attracts some great speakers including people like uh, Douglas Mitchell who heads up the society's RTAM committee and, uh, and people like Terry Wollers of Wollers Associates both of whom were involved in this year's uh, project. The, the one speaker who stood out in my mind, however, was Boris Fritz of Northrop Grumman, who really gave a science fiction style look um, as to what the future might hold. Uh, after Boris's presentation, I had a few minutes with him to ask him to repeat what he For said, example, one of especially the, the that highlights. My attention was you were talking about programmable material. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it's a really exciting area, and one of my colleagues. Uh, Josh Hall has written a book on, called Nano Future, and he's the one that came up with the idea of foglets, also known as utility fog. And um, what I find fascinating about that idea is if you imagine a television screen and you think of pixels on the television screen, now think of them as voxels, as volumetric pixels, but much smaller. They don't have to be nano size. But they're these little tiny uh, round things with hooks, like I think six or eight hooks on them, and they bond to each other. And the bond is programmable as to how strong it is. So let's say you have billions of them on your floor in your living room. And uh, depending on the bond, they can feel like a hardwood floor or can feel like a soft carpet. Now you say a certain program and all the voxels, all the foglets suddenly reform to, into a bed and, and you're in your bedroom now so and if you're you... sleeping on these foglets and right. then when the morning comes you say okay I want this now to be my living room and the foglets dissolve no more bed now you have a table chairs and all that and the next thing is a friend calls from say Australia and immediately the foglets form around your head and form a perfect image of what your friend's room looks like in Australia. And at the same time, all the furniture changes and dissolves and forms into what your friend's room looks like, where he's calling you from, so that you can go sit down on his couch and uh, or you can walk up and shake his hand because it'll have a form, his form as foglets and have the sense of this feeling of a human hand, but it's foglets. Now, this isn't virtual reality because it's more it like reality. real reality, it is reality. it's made of foglets. So it's and eventually this could happen that all the roads could be made of this stuff, our, our, uh, machine, our cars could be made out of this. And I mean, in the far future, you could think that you go on vacation, you dissolve your house, make it look like a park, and you come back and you figure what kind of house do you want, and the foglets reform. But that's far away. But in the well, next 20 years, yeah. we're going to see some of this. What are we going to see? Are we going to see any of it in the next five years? We might. Yeah. Uh, some of the problems right now is the programmability. It's very complicated. But uh, if you go and look up utility fog or foglets on the internet you'll find some of these things from Josh Hall. Now one of the other things that just blew my mind was you were talking about um, and I, you have to help me with the terminology because I really don't know it but basically you were talking about programmable blood I mean oxygen something that you would put into your body that would basically supply oxygen. Tell me about that. Right, those are the respirocytes. Okay. And that's a concept that's being developed <clears throat> that generates oxygen within the blood. And so what you do is you replace about 10% of your blood with these respirocytes. And then you would have literally four hours where you can hold your breath. <clears throat> so if you had a problem with your heart stopping, 
you could just leisurely call the hospital, say, oh, well, I've had a heart attack, my heart has stopped, I'm on my way to the hospital, and just have everything ready for surgery, and you could even stop off at the market on the way, you know, you have four hours. And the other thing, of course, you could go scuba diving without any gear. You could just hold your breath so you don't get water in your lungs and just stay under for several hours. Wow. So this would be a remarkable thing that, you know, maybe we can see that in the next 10, 20 years.